Hello, and welcome to another Facebook Live broadcast with MedStar Health. My name is Michelle Carter, and today we're going to be talking about how our team at the Good Health Center is a valuable clinical resource for managing advanced heart failure and reducing emergency room visits and hospital readmissions. I'm joined today by advanced heart failure cardiologist, Dr. David Shu, physician assistant, Patrick Corelli, clinical pharmacist, Jennifer Lee, and the Good Health Center office supervisor, Scott Morgan. We have a lot to cover today. So if you or someone you love has been affected by advanced heart failure and would like to know more about how to manage it, stick around, share this broadcast with your friends and share your uh, questions and comments uh, below. We're gonna take some time to answer those as well. Dr. Shu, Patrick, Jennifer, and Scott, thank you all and, and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to have this discussion. Uh, first, I'd like to begin with uh, Dr. Shu to discuss heart failure. Uh, so Dr. Shu, could you share uh, what heart failure is and what causes it? Uh, thank you for having us. Um, I'm happy to be here today to discuss heart failure. Um, um, you know, your question about heart failure, it's, um, it's a very broad topic and I can talk forever about it, but at the heart of it is patients who have some sort of inefficiency in their heart output where the rest of the body senses that and there's a disequilibrium in the ability for the body to regulate fluid balance and salt balance. So um, to put it in layman's term, um, the things that patients see are shortness of breath, problems going up and down stairs, um, going out to see, see friends, going out doing normal daily things. As things get worse and worse, and this whole process can come on very slowly, um, you may even not notice when, you know, how long ago it started, but pretty soon the patient ends up in a hospital uh, with a lot of extra fluid on board in the legs, and um, they have to stay in the hospital and they will have to get the, all the fluid off. So, you know, this whole process takes weeks to months and can come on. And if it's the first time, the patients are oftentimes mix, misdiagnosed um, with an asthma attack or a pneumonia or something else, but it doesn't get better with antibiotics. And oftentimes they end up seeing us either in the hospital or being diagnosed by their cardiologist or, or primary care doctor. And um, sometimes we see these patients being referred to our our center at the Good Health Center. Thanks, Dr. Shu. Uh, could you talk about um, the ejection fraction? I know I don't I don't really know anything about it. I've never heard that term. Could you could yep. you explain what the ejection fraction is and the yep. role it plays in heart failure? Absolutely. Yep. Um, the ejection fraction you probably heard of that term before, or EF. It's sometimes shortened down as the, the abbreviation EF, which stands for ejection fraction, or sometimes LVEF. Um, it's a shorthand term for um, the pumping chamber of the heart. So you have two pumping chambers. One pumps to the lungs, and the other side, the left ventricle, pumps to the body. So um, the LVEF, or the left ventricular ejection fraction, it is a is a number that we use to look at how the heart's working. Um, a normal ejection fraction is around 60%. That's when you're sitting around, not doing a whole lot. So that means if you think, the, think of the heart as a, a bag of marbles, you have 100 marbles going into that bag, which each with each squeeze of the heart, 60 leave the heart and go to the rest of the body where the blood is doing its normal thing, giving oxygen, nutrients to the brain, your, your, your muscles, your legs, your abdomen, um, and then it relaxes and then it fills again and then the next squeeze comes on. So 60 is normal. A lot, a lot of times our patients with heart failure, that number is decreased. Um, it can be down to 45 to 30. Sometimes we see patients who are very sick down to even 10 to 20 percent. Um, so that's when things get very worrying for patients and their uh, medical care doctors. And, you know, we see a lot of these patients in our clinic. So that's 
the ejection fraction. So we also see patients at the clinic where their ejection fraction is normal. So it's kind of counterintuitive in that, wow, that, that number is the same, but they still have the issues with heart failure fluid balance. Um, they have a different problem where even though the squeezing strength of the heart is fine, it's the opposite. The relaxation part is worse. So um, we also see patients who have heart failure symptoms, even though the ejection fraction is uh, normal. Thank you. Thanks for explaining that. I, I think I have a, a better idea of what's, what could be going on um, for patients with heart failure. Um, could you also share uh, what are the warning signs and symptoms of heart failure? What should people be looking out for? Yeah. So uh, excellent question. It's hard. It's really, really hard. It's even hard for doctors and providers to kind of tease out what it's coming from. So um, again, shortness of breath. Shortness of breath can come from a lot of different things. Um, it could come from the lungs and sometimes it comes from the heart. So if you have shortness of breath and fluid retention, I think those two combined should kind of point you in the direction of heart failure. Um, there's other things at play too, um, weight gain, um, uh, inability to lay flat at nighttime with breathing, waking up in the middle of the night with breathing, trouble. Um, but those things are harder, you know, to, to tease out. But if you have shortness of breath plus swelling, those are kind of the biggest worrying signs that you may have heart failure. And you should probably talk to somebody, a, a doctor or a cardiologist about it. Thank you, Dr. Shu. Um, could you also share what are the common uh, risk factors for heart failure? What should people, yes. what, what preventative things can people pay attention yeah. to right now? So, um, some of the same risk factors as, as you know, other medical problems, um, diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure. If you've had a previous heart attack, a lot of times if you, if, if you have damage from that heart attack, your heart muscle is not working as efficiently as before. So all those things can kind of play a role in, in creating risk factors. Certain risk factors we can't, we can't fix, uh, we can't alter like getting older, um, your genetics that you're born with, but the ones that I mentioned, there are things that we pay attention to because it can be something that we can manage and try to slow down the progression. One last thing I forgot to mention is sleep apnea is a very important one that can cause um, heart failure symptoms. All right, thank you. This, this is all great information. Um, thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn to, um, I'd like to pull in physician assistant Patrick Torelli to talk about the Good Health Center. Um, so Pat, uh, what is the Good Health Center? Well, first off, uh, Michelle, thank you very much for moderating this and thank you for the invitation. We're all happy to be here. Um, the Good Health Center is basically, it's an outpatient clinic on hospital property that's connected to the hospital. It is multidisciplinary in that you know, congestive heart failure is a very big part of what we do, but there are also other clinics there. There is diabetes management. There is the uh, collaborative care program, which helps patients who come out of the hospital to stay out of the hospital as well. There's a cardiometabolic clinic that helps aggressively manage people with cardiovascular disease. So it's, it's not just a heart failure clinic there. We do have uh, uh, other services as well. But what, is, uh, what, what sets us apart, uh, the Good Health Center, from a lot of places is that we function like an inpatient uh, service. Even though we are outpatient, we use the hospital lab, we use the hospital pharmacy, so we can get results to lab work right away. We can give IV medications right out of the Pixis, just like we would in the hospital. So uh, it, 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 the beauty of the Good Health Center, it allows us to do real-time management of patients um, while they were still there in clinic. Okay, uh, thank you, Pat. Um, what, uh, what other services are available for people specifically with um, advanced heart failure? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, when patients come there, you know, they receive a lot of education. There's a lot, as Dr. Shu had said, there's a lot that goes into heart failure, a lot to understand. And not everybody's going to understand all of it, but we're always there to help coach them through to get the, at least the essentials to help them manage this disease. Um, we do medication management as well. We offer uh, urgent appointments for people who, uh, who are starting to get 
excess fluid on board and not so sick that they have to go to the hospital, but they might not be able to wait several weeks to see their cardiologist. We can usually see them the next day, sometimes the same day. Um, like I was saying before, we do labs in, in real time uh, while the patient is still there. Patients get an information packet to go home with. They get a scale so that they can weigh themselves daily. That's important for heart failure patients. Uh, we have a pharmacist in-house. Um, you'll be speaking with her in a little bit. Um, heart failure patients gain access to a heart failure support group with other patients just like them. Um, there's a, a gym membership that we offer to them that, that's right down the hallway from us so that they can maintain their activity. Um, we do have free parking, which is a big plus for a lot of patients. Money is tight everywhere right now. We understand that. Um, and uh, we even have more advanced type therapies like ultra filtration. It's just another therapeutic option for patients who are particularly resistant to the normal uh, standards of care. That's awesome to hear and great to hear about the free parking. That always comes in handy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pat. Um, at this time, I'd like to welcome our viewers again. Uh, if you're just joining us now, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're talking about advanced heart failure and how our team at the Good Health Center helps patients uh, manage it. Also, while, re while reducing emergency room visits and hospital readmissions. I'm here with advanced heart failure cardiologist, Dr. David Shu, physician assistant, uh, Patrick Corelli, clinical pharmacist, Jennifer Lee, and the Good Health Center Office Supervisor, Scott Morgan. We have a lot more to talk about today, so keep watching, share this video with your friends, um, give us a like as well to let us know that you're watching, and share any questions that you have in the comments below. Uh, speaking of questions, um, I do have one that just came in um, from Lisa. She's asking, uh, does the Good Health Center have an IV diuresis clinic? I'll give that to you, Patrick. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do. Um, and that's actually how this program started. That was the uh, mainstay of the program, the big attraction. Um, we've continued that and now we've added all these additional services to it. But absolutely, we do give uh, IV medications right in clinic. Awesome. That's, that's great to hear. Thanks, Pat. And thanks, Lisa, for sharing your question with us. Uh, so let's continue with some more questions. I'd like to turn uh, back to uh, Dr. Shu. Um, what are the benefits for patients who receive care at the Good Health Center? Yeah, I think it's multifaceted. Um, at the heart of it, you see all these people and, you know, these are not all of the members of the team actually. Can you believe it? There's actually other members. So um, the people are really important. I think we're going to talk more about um, diuresis clinics like the Good Health Center. But I think um, there's been several evolutions of our um, heart failure clinic, where um, our predecessor, Dr. Jor Ruiz, brought in these excellent members of our team, Pat, Scott, Jennifer, and our nurses. Um, before, it was a place where you sent your patients and they got IV medications. But now, um, through the evolution of having Pat and Jennifer there, we're able to actually make very minute but significant changes on the fly at each visit. So it's not cookie cutter medicine where you get the same dose of medication every time and it takes a long time for medication to be adjusted. Um, Jennifer is able to help increase heart medication on the fly each time they're there or identify issues with medicines not being taken correctly or actually you know, two of the same medications being used at the same time, which we don't want. So that's just one small, you know, one big thing actually that, that we can offer there. Um, the other things are the, the, you know, other resources that we have there. Um, I think Scott and Pat can elaborate more, but um, the gym, like Patrick said, we have the uh, metabolic panel, uh, metabolic clinic where our endocrinologists are there to help with diabetes management. Um, but I've seen patients get uh, fluid removed with a procedure from their lungs or their abdomen, in addition to IV diuresis medications, um, we have uh, a, community, a community health advocate who helps with issues such as lack of um, funds or food access or shelter access. I've sent patients who have lived in a, a, a church there and they've been able to help me. So 
I think one, the most important thing is the people there are special. They care. They want to help you and they go that extra mile. And then, you know, we're able to do both social and medical things to help patients get better. It's, I think it's very holistic. I like that. A holistic perspective. It seems like a one-stop shop and it, it, I feel, I would feel good um, taking one of my relatives there. So thank you, Dr. Shu. Um, this next question is for both uh, Dr. Shu and Pat. Uh, what's the difference between a visit to the Good Health Center versus a visit to the cardiologist? So Dr. Shu, if you'd like to start and Pat, if you'd like to chime in as I'll well. I'll let Pat have that one first. Okay. <laughs> All right, Pat. Well, basically we're better than the cardiology appointment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the cardiology appointment and Dr. Shu can elaborate on this. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's more uh, encompasses the whole cardiovascular system. Um, whereas in the, the congestive heart failure clinic, you know, we're focusing on congestive heart failure. Um, we probably do have a little more resources in, uh, in the way of time with the patient than a, a cardiologist may have. Their schedules are typically busier than ours uh, and they have less time. Um, and of course, things like the lab, things like community health advocacy, things like pharmacists, you know, we, we do have all those in clinic where, you know, the cardiology office, it's very difficult to try and coordinate all that. Um, in their in their tight time slots. Dr. Shu? Uh, I agree with everything Pat said. I would have said the same thing. Um, I think the other thing that, to remember is heart, heart failure is really, really complex. Like um, if I were a lay person, there's so many different aspects of, of how to, things that a patient needs to do in order to be successful in staying out of the hospital. Um, I'm talking things like what their diet is um, what things to avoid food and what to look out for. And that's just one aspect of it. Um, medication, again, I'm touching on, and this is really important to be on top of medication. And anytime people have heart failure, now you're on at least five different heart medication in addition to other medication that you're taking for diabetes or, or gout and things like that. So there's a lot of moving parts. And um, like Pat alluded to, time to explain it and explain it over and over because uh, you know you may not remember everything we tell you uh, on one appointment. So we're able to kind of sit down with the patient and kind of reiterate things. Our nurses do that, Patrick does that. Uh, Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Lee, our pharmacist does that. So all of these things um, kind of play a role in trying to uh, form a successful relationship with our patient in order to keep them out of hospital, and also more importantly, get them feeling better. Thank you both. Um, uh, Pat, I'd like to turn to you again. Uh, what does a typical appointment at the Good Health Center look like? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, pondering that question, it's, it's, you know, because we have a custom tailored program, it's, it is a little different for almost every patient. We have little, you know, little. once we get to know them, when we know where the needs are, you know, that's where we try to meet them. But uh, let's say a, a new patient would come through the door and they would get their vital signs uh, checked. They would get their labs drawn. And while the labs are down in, uh, in the, while the blood work is in the lab being processed, um, a, a nurse, registered nurse would be evaluating the patient, would be going over extensive education about the disease state and then looking for cues as to where their social needs are so we can pull the community health advocate in efficiently. Um, we uh, also uh, would then be seen by a provider, uh, either myself or one of the others, or by an advanced heart doc like uh, Dr. Shu. And um, then the clinical uh, care would start. We'd uh, come up with a plan and then, um, you know, uh, write out the plan uh, that the patient needs. You know, an another thing that these patients are getting that you uh, might not uh, off the top of your head consider is they're also being around other patients with the same disease state. And we have a floor plan laid out as such that there is connection between patients. And this brings a certain camaraderie and uh, a certain reassurance that we can do this. It's not just me, it's I'm not alone. Um, sometimes we'll even try the education por uh, portion with more than one patient at the same time because some will ask questions that the other one hadn't thought of. So uh, 
this is really the, as Dr. Shu said, it's a real evolution. We keep finding the need and more and more needs, and that's where we go with the program. Sorry to interject, but Pat, do we still have the support group for our heart failure, heart failure patients that they come meet? We sure do. We, um, uh, we have that once a month, the third Thursday of every month. And uh, yeah, that's, a, that's offered to everyone. But again, those are the cues that nursing and providers are looking for and med techs. So if there's anything that we see that they're struggling with, because this isn't depressing, you know, the studies show that depression uh, you know, can come hand in hand with heart failure. And uh, that's why we plug them into the mental health side of uh, the support group. That's a great, great question. Thank you, uh, Pat. And thanks, Dr. Shu, as well, for mentioning that. I think that's a good, um, that goes back to our holistic approach. Um, I really feel uh, good about hearing that we do have that support for patients to know that they're, they're not alone in this, in this journey. So thank you. Thank you all for sharing that. Uh, Pat, how often does someone need to go to the Good Health Center? Do they go you know, as needed or more on a regular, on a regular basis? Yeah, that's another good question. And uh, again, it, it depends on the patient. We're trying to assess that with our first encounter with them. Um, if they're in trouble and we recognize it, we'll bring them back three times in a week, every other day if we have to, to get them straight. <clears throat> As they uh, demonstrate stability, then we'll go to once a week and then we'll give them two weeks if they're stable at two weeks. And then we'll go to a month, two months, and then three months. And then generally speaking at the three month uh, point, if they are doing fine and we don't need to intervene, then we try to uh, put them on an as needed basis. Basically we don't set up your next appointment, but uh, if you feel you need us, call us and we'll get you back in. We never say goodbye forever to anybody. Good to know, good to know. Um, so who does a patient uh, typically see during a routine visit? Will they see the same people every time? Will that you know, fluctuate? You know, at one point it was the same people every time, um, but as the program has grown and we've hired more staff, we've got, you know, duplicity and who can do what. So um, you will see a med tech, you will see a nurse, may not be the same med tech, it may not be the same nurse. You'll see a provider. We try to keep consistency with that when we can, but we now have uh, you know, three advanced practice providers working there and uh, five uh, advanced heart failure docs that will rotate through. So you may not always get the same person seeing you, but there will be uh, uh, collaboration through the patient medical record and there will be continuity of care regardless. Great, great. Um, we spoke earlier about um, the other services available uh, to heart failure patients, but what about um, you know, other patients going through different uh, types of conditions? What other types of services are available for them at the Good Health Center? Yeah, we do. We have quite a few. Um, we do have endocrinology, um, diabetes care, diabetes education. We have a nutritionist available. Um, in the same facility, we have cardiac rehab, we have pulmonary rehab um, that utilizes the gym, which our patients once cleared by us can use the gym as a free membership. Um, we offer, and Scott will talk about this more, we offer transportation to patients who need it, um, whether it's by Uber or by mobility um, or you know, uh, public transportation, we have different avenues we go through. We have community health advocacy coming through. Um, the collaborative care program is uh, right down the hall from us. They offer a, a, a food pharmacy for people with food insecurity. They can actually walk out of there with a bag of groceries the same day. Um, they offer heavily into diabetes care as well. Um, the community health advocate is stationed there as well. Um, they also have cardio metabolic clinic, which as we were saying before, it's another cardiovascular slash endocrine uh, management program to go after people aggressively who have significant cardiovascular risks, such as uh, really high cholesterol or uh, uh, atherosclerotic disease. So uh, we, we, we have a lot and um, we try to, you know, touch on all of them. We try to keep all of those in mind when a patient comes through to see what other services they may need and we direct them accordingly. That's great. That's really great. Good. It's impressive to know the, the breadth of services that are available to people and um, the links that you guys go to to treat our patients. So that's, that's good to know. Um, 
is this type of center available at other hospitals? I'm just curious. So as far as the IV diuretic part goes, it seems that most of the hospital systems in, in Maryland have at least one of these facilities that can give IV diuretics. Um, but as far as, as you said, the breadth of services we offer, to my knowledge, there's none that has everything that we do. And, uh, and that's something that we believe has given us a competitive edge and it's made our outcomes so good. And that's why we are constantly adjusting it. We, we feel, I feel we're leading and uh, people are on our heels. So we're constantly trying to uh, stay in front. Thank you, Pat. Um, I have another question for both you and Dr. Shu. Um, could you share a good success story of a patient who has benefited uh, from being at the Good Health Center? Uh, I have two right off the top of my head. One is a, a patient we highlighted in one of our um, quarterly magazines. You know, this patient was down and he had open heart surgery that was not successful. And, you know, he was basically on hospice. And the patient said, you know, something's off. I want to see what else I can do. And I referred the patient to uh, Patrick and we diagnosed him with a different heart condition where um, his heart muscle was, again, was not working very well. But we, um, through Pat's help, you know, the patient was almost on dialysis. And now his kidneys are chugging along and he's got 100 pounds of fluid left, uh, less fluid on board. And, you know, he's still out there in the community. Um, another patient um, that off the top of my head, you know, I met her and she was very tearful and just overwhelmed by her diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension and um, uh, uh, blood clots in her lungs. And, you know, through counseling and multiple different visits, she felt comfortable with her diagnosis. And ultimately, she was referred to uh, Philadelphia for surgery to remove these blood clots, and she's doing much better. So those are two patients I can think of right off the top of my head where we made a huge impact on their lives. Pat, do you have anybody else? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of someone, this was a young lady uh, in her 30s who was, uh, who was used to being in the hospital five to six times per year. And um, she was seen at Union Memorial, the workup was started. And then she, once she stabilized, she was transitioned to our clinic. And we end up getting another 80 to 90 pounds of fluid off of her. And uh, since then, she's gotten engaged. She may be married by now. Uh, she had zero hospitalizations the last time I spoke with her, and she was over one year out of the hospital. She did go in to get a minor like skin procedure, same day type thing, but that was a scheduled event. Um, and, uh, and her life was totally changed. I would love to be able to take full credit for that, but it really, really is a total team effort from the top down. And um, everybody played a part in that, and the patient is forever grateful. That's truly amazing. Thank, thank you for sharing those those stories. I can just imagine what it would have been what it would have been like to go through what they went through. You know, possibly losing hope at moments, and just you know, let me give it one more try. And, and you guys were able to help them. So thank you very much for for the team effort and uh, for helping our patients. Um, at this time, I'd like to to uh, share one of our audience questions. Uh, this comes from Colleen. Um, she's asking, do you partner uh, with any outpatient community-based palliative care programs? And if so, at what point in the diagnosis uh, do you refer? Um, okay, so that's a great question. I forgot to mention uh, the, that other member of our team. So MedStar, we have um, the patch program um, that comes out to your house and there's a nurse that comes visit. And, um, you know, I think everybody, it, it's dependent on the patient's need, but I think at least once a week they can come see you and they do vital signs and see how you're doing. And they can also do televisits. So um, that is, that the patch program is our um, palliative care um, network that, that comes out to, to see our patients. I think Patrick, Patrick, you, can you elaborate more? Because Yeah, that, that's one of the uh, indicators that we're looking for with patients when we 
start to detect that they're getting run down or tired or that you know things are looking more terminal um, that we will bring up to the patient. We feel comfortable asking their wishes basically. What do you, are we doing too much here? What would you like done? And um, if we do get the sense that they're more considered, uh, more uh, interested in something like hospice patch programs, who we generally reach out to, they are uh, phenomenally um, uh, fast. I mean, they, uh, they, they'll jump on sometimes the same day they will be at the patient's house to evaluate them. It's really impressive. Um, and they have, like Dr. Shu said, multiple ways of remote monitoring patients. Um, a lot of the insurance companies, and Scott can correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of insurance companies will even cover patients who are on hospice if they still want to come to the congestive heart failure clinic just for stabilization and just for uh, comfort measures. You know, sometimes they just need a dose of IV Lasix to feel better. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we, we definitely utilize the patch program. They communicate with me through the uh, electronic medical record all the time, send me patterns of vital signs and things for people who are not on hospice. So uh, yeah, that is a, an excellent tool. Dr. Shu, I'm glad you brought that up. I would be remiss if I did not uh, speak about that. Great, thank you both. Um, I have one more audience question before we move on to, to Jennifer and Scott. Uh, this one comes from uh, Janet who's asking or uh, who's asking, in your experience, has AV node ablation helped with symptoms from AFib and newly diagnosed um, heart failure in a patient with history of alcohol ablation? Um, that is for Dr. Okay. Shu. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Dr. Shu. This, yeah, one, I, this, this one's definitely for you. They have a HOCM, yeah. hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Yes, yeah, so... Um, we're, we're, we're changing gears a little bit, um, you know, as heart doctors, there's general cardiologists and then there's subspecialties like heart failure. Um, I really enjoy taking care of heart, heart failure patients because you have to think about all the different other aspects that play a role into the issues with the heart failure. So um, this question, you know, brings up an excellent point where heart failure can cause problems with electro con electrical conduction. Electrical conduction cannot cause problems with heart failure. And you have to look again, both at the, the patient holistically, as well as the different moving parts of the heart. So um, when we take atrial fibrillation by itself um, without heart failure, there's lots of different reasons for it. And we try to tackle it in a stepwise fashion. So meaning, less aggressive measures and then seeing how things go. Um, the procedure that's mentioned um, in the question, the AV nodal ablation, is one of the more advanced um, stages of treatment for atrial fibrillation. We have certainly done that. We have certainly referred patients for AV nodal ablation when you've tried everything else. You've tried medications. You've tried just routine atrial fibrillation ablation. You've tried cardioversion, you've tried um, lots of other things. So if the severity of the atrial fibrillation is so bad that nothing else has worked, we have certainly recommended AV nodal ablation in order to prevent that heart rate from being so fast where it's just making the heart race and race and going too fast for it to work efficiently. So the bottom line is, yes, we've seen it, but I think um, the take-home message is, again, this is what I love about taking care of patients with heart failure. You have to look at everything. You have to, you have a mental checklist. Do we talk about this? Do we make sure this is not playing a factor? Um, and it's not just the heart, but it's also the rest of the body. All right. Thank you, Dr. Shu, and thank you, Pat. Um, I have one other question for Dr. Shu. Um, well, how, how do patients get started with the Good Health Center? How can patients connect with you? We had a, an audience question, uh, question as well from Lisa, similar yes. to this. How do they connect with you? Do they have to be discharged or you know be seen at MedStar Health first? What's that process? Yeah, so we have patients from all over. I think Scott would be an excellent person to answer it. But for me, I have such a strong relationship with everybody on, on the board. I basically just send them a message. I say, Hey guys, I just met this patient for the very first time. My next time seeing the patient will be a month from now, but there's so much things that we need to do in between that one month period. Can you guys help me out? 
I don't want to send this patient to the hospital. I want to keep them out of the hospital and they're in danger of going back into the hospital. So I, I text them, I have a, I send a message in our medical charts um, and they reach out to the patient. Um, Scott, if, if somebody's outside our, of the network, how do, how do they get a hold of you guys? Yeah, so um, typically there are, it doesn't happen all the time, but occasionally we have patients who find us through the MedStar Health website or through actually just like Google searching heart failure. Um, and there are also, um, recently we have made, I think, such a good footprint in the area that um, a lot of discharges from other local area hospitals have been reaching out to us based on patients insurance. So there is um, MedStar Family Choice Insurance, which um, directs patients back towards MedStar Health and at discharge from other like LifeBridge and things of that nature, case management has actually started reaching out to us to hook the patients in at discharge from other hospitals as well. Um, but we definitely have patients who just are doing their own research and find our telephone number and we plug them in. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Dr. Shu. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, turn to our clinical pharmacist, uh, Jennifer Lee, to talk about um, where the pharmacy fits into to this um, patient journey. So how is the pharmacy integrated into the Good Health Center? Yeah, so many of the patients are used to seeing the pharmacist work in retail setting. Um, but the role also has shifted to providing integrated pharmaceutical care in the hospital and also in the clinic. So I work in Good Health Center along with Dr. Xu and Pat. Um, my primary responsibility as a clinical pharmacist is to um, optimize patients' medication therapies and also ensuring medication safety through coordinated medication management and the review. Great, great. And how, how do you as a pharmacist and other pharmacists on your team work with the patient and what types of services uh, do you all provide? Um, so when patients arrive to heart failure clinic, the pharmacists perform what we call medication reconciliation, which is the process of comparing patients' medication list um, to all of the medication the patient has been taking. During the interview, pharmacists identify the medication-related problems and try to provide a solution based on each individual's needs. And I often um, provide patient education about their medication, how to improve their medication adherence, when to take their medication, answer questions about herbal supplements, and many, many more. Um, if there is a financial barrier in obtaining medication, I try to find an alternative option or find a coupon or patient assistance programs as well. Um, what I try to do is to make sure patients have the medication that they were prescribed by the providers and patients are taking that correctly. That's great. I think that, that fits into the, the next question I was going to ask about how you help patients with advanced heart failure manage their, medic their medications. Uh, could, you, could you elaborate a little bit more about that as well? Sorry, what was the question again? Sure, sure. Um, so how do you help uh, patients with advanced heart failure continue to manage uh, their, their medications at the Good Health Center? Yeah, so I um, often work a lot with Dr. Shu and Patrick directly, along with other providers in heart failure clinic. Um, after I perform medication reconciliation and identify the discrepancy, I notify the providers because it is very important for the providers to know how exactly patient has been taking their medication in order for them to um, change their medications. Um, in addition, if I identify any medication related problems such as allergies, dosing issues, um, drug interaction, potential adverse effects, I uh, make recommendation to adjust their medication to avoid those adverse effects. Um, also, I made um, recommendations to optimize their heart related medications such as um, if they if patients who have reduced ejection fraction, I try to make sure they're on the right dose of the heart medication. 
and making sure blood pressure is well controlled. Um, I answer medication related questions that providers have. I share information on the latest new medication that's out in the market with the team. Um, in addition to clinical responsibilities, I also make sure the patient is getting appropriate refills, sometimes work with the pharmacy or even the insurance company on prior authorization process, making sure patients can obtain their medication that they need. That's great. That's great to hear. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, and I know you mentioned how you work, you coordinate efforts with, with Dr. Shu and with Patrick as well. Um, do you also coordinate with uh, the patient's other physicians? Perhaps they have a primary care provider outside of MedStar Health or um, they're being seen somewhere else. Do you, um, what's that, that coordination like? So that's a good question. Um, even though I work in heart failure clinic, I communicate with other providers if drug-related problems are identified by me. Um, for example, if we um, we had one patient who had very low blood sugar in the clinic, uh, we treated his low blood sugar by giving orange juice and sandwich, but um, we didn't just stop there. We reached out to his primary care doctor um, to get his agreement on stopping one of his blood sugar medications. And we wanted to make sure um, he doesn't take it by any mistake by removing, actually physically removing them um, from his pill box. So that way patient doesn't have another critically low blood sugar. Um, when I identify any medication discrepancy or any adverse effect that patient is experiencing, I try to reach out to patient's other provider to make sure we can provide optimal medication therapy, even though it is outside of the heart failure. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, learn a little bit more about the Good Health Center. So I'd like to turn to the Good Health Center Office Supervisor, Scott Morgan. Um, so Scott, uh, do you have to make an appointment to be seen at the Good Health Center or can patients uh, walk in? Um, typically, we don't do walk-ins. We do prefer that patients make appointments just because we're a fairly busy clinic and we do have um, limited space daily to see people. But um, also on top of trying to avoid patient walk-ins, we also try to keep space for every now and then um, a primary cardiologist or one of the advanced heart failure doctors will have a patient in the office who is in dire need of coming to see us. And in those cases, we will do a same day uh, visit with that patient when the cardiologist reaches out and says this, this patient's in trouble and we really need them seen today. Um, and, and what if a patient is unsure if they need to go to the Good Health Center or um, the emergency department? Um, I know we talked about patients with excessive fluid. In those instances, uh, what, where do you recommend that they go? So typically, like especially patients who are already enrolled in our clinic, we really like them to reach out to us before doing anything, coming either to the Good Health Center or to the emergency room. Um, we do a pretty extensive over-the-phone triage and ask a lot of very specific questions about what the issues are that the patient's having at the moment. And um, if the patient seems like they are um, in real dire need, then we typically communicate that with Patrick or one of the other providers in the clinic. And then uh, Patrick and the other providers will then take over from there and either advise the patient on some changes they can make or will make an appointment for perhaps the very next day. Or if it's definitely something that the providers feel urgent enough to go to the emergency room, that's where we would have them directed. But we typically like the communication first to try to avoid that emergency room uh, visit. All right, um, that's good to know. Um, that, that's a good segue for my next question um, about um, after a patient has their appointment at the Good Health Center, if it's determined that they need to see another specialist, um, who helps to coordinate um, with, with that care? Um, so that's kind of the best part about the Good Health Center is I think we all pitch in as much as needed. And very typically there are a lot of other specialists who are needed. 
Most often it's pulmonology and nephrology. Um, every now and then definitely endocrinology. Um, and we definitely help make sure that those point appointments are either secured or the information to get the appointment is on the patient's discharge instructions from the clinic. So that way they have all the information needed to have an appointment or already physically have the appointment before they leave here. Okay. Um, and uh, for patients who, who have difficulty with reliable transportation, um, what, what help is available for them if they have difficulties getting to the Good Health Center? So our most wonderful community health care advocate is really, really the most um, reliable form of that. There are lots of different forms. We do have cab vouchers. We do help with MTA mobility um, forms to ensure that the patients have taxi access and the ability to get and schedule MTA mobility. Um, they also are offering some Uber services to patients who have financial qualifications for that service as well. That's, that's great. That's good to know that, you know, transportation doesn't have to be a barrier. A lot of times it can be. Um, so um, as we close, I do have a couple more questions. Um, are there any other services available at the Good Health Center? Um, any, any other types of care that you all help to coordinate? So I think that most <laughs> Definitely the collaborative care program. I think I'll, oftentimes with heart failure patients and in our clinic setting, we really identify with the patients who have food insecurity. They definitely get referred to the collaborative care program. Again, uncontrolled blood sugars, the collaborative care program and the cardiometabolic clinic help intervene there. Um, patients whose blood, uh, blood pressure is just ridiculously uncontrolled. The collaborative care program helps out there as well. And uh, we work very well together with the collaborative care program to try to make a very whole approach to taking care of the patients. That's, that's good to know. Um, thank you very much, Scott. Um, as we close, I have one last question from our audience member. This is um, from Colleen, um, who's asking about the patch program. I think we, we mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, so what geographical area in Maryland does the patch program go to? Uh, Scott, you may have more info on this than me. Uh, I, I don't know the exact perimeter that they will cover, but I know in, in the Baltimore area, we have you know four MedStar hospitals and it serves all four of those and the specific area around them. So uh, it's a pretty large area, uh, but I, I don't know the specifics. I, I'll, I'll tell you this, you know, I've been here five years and I've used them many times and I still haven't had someone that they said, oh, I'm sorry, this patient's too far away. I haven't run into that. It, it may happen, but I haven't seen that. Scott, do you have any other info on that? Uh, no, everything you said is pretty accurate. I'm not sure exactly the area that it encompasses, but all of the four hospitals that we work with do have the program. And I, like you, have never had anyone say, sorry, we can't see that patient. They're too far away. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And thank you, Scott. And thanks, Colleen, um, for sharing your question with us and for tuning in. Um, any, any last thoughts before we, before we wrap up for today from, from our panel? I, I just want to chime in and say how critically important our pharmacy staff is so uh, you know, and crucial in helping our patients. You know, I just want to highlight how important Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Lee is to our program. You know, I, the medicine, the, the things that we do are, are medicine based. We're not procedurally based. We're not surgical doctors or clinicians. We use medicine and the medicines work. Um, but, you know, when you get a prescription, it's a tiny bottle and there's tiny print on there. And you're like, what, how, how do I take this medicine? So, you know, with help from our, our pharmacists, the medicine we start on when you first get diagnosed with heart failure is not the medicine that you're going to end up on. It's a progression. The medicine I think of as like exercise. You don't start with running a mile when you're not, when, when you're just starting, but we want to get you there. That's the end goal. So the medicine you're starting 
it's going to be vastly different from the medicine that you're going to finally be on at the end of your journey. And I would say, you know, it's hard because there's so many different medicines and you're going to have so many different dosages of these medicines of the same medicines. And, you know, I, again, I want, I want to say thank you to Dr. Jennifer Lee for helping us. They've done things behind the scenes where they fill medicine boxes for us in order for patients to be on these medications. And it's all the little things that they do in order for us to be su successful in using medicine. It's, it's amazing what medicines we have right now and, and it's continually evolving and getting better and better, but it's challenging for our patients because there's so many different medications out there. Yeah, if I could piggyback off of that to, to, to Jennifer in particular, uh, she had made a comment about um, how she makes recommendations to us. And honestly, to us, it's, it's, it's not just a recommendation. I mean, if it's a call that she feels strongly about, we just do it. We just do it because we know that's her, that's her niche. And, uh, and she's gotten very comfortable up there with us and we've gotten extremely comfortable with her. So uh, Dr. Shu was right, you know, that the, the pharmacy, we were, we worked really hard to get their presence in the clinic and, uh, and I'm so glad we did because now I look at what we do every day. And the, the, you know, the question isn't what can Jennifer do today? The question is what would I do if Jennifer wasn't here? <laughs> so it's great to have pharmacies help and we would love to have them even more. Well, picking back to that, um, I really enjoy working in the heart failure clinic. I really feel like I'm accepted as a team. Um, I learned everything, you know, new things from Dr. Xu, Pat, and you know other providers every single day and i just want to acknowledge how you know compassionate they are they're you know empathetic towards their patient they really do care and even patients you know come to us saying that they really feel like you know family member when they come to our clinic and they actually enjoy coming in here and i just wanted to thank everybody because it is a team effort and it is a big disease state to tag on and we need a team to work on that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, I think that that was very well said. It's, it's definitely a team effort. It, it definitely, definitely shows how well you all work together and coordinate care for our patients. So I wanna say thank you very much for doing that. Um, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you to Dr. Shu, Patrick, Jennifer, and Scott for joining us today and taking out the time to share your expertise with us. And many thanks to all of you, our viewers, for tuning in and sharing your questions with us. Um, if you have any more, please share those in the comments below. We're gonna take some time and we'll get back to you and share our responses offline. Um, if you're interested in learning more, about managing advanced heart failure and the work that we do at the Good Health Center, or if you'd like to schedule an appointment, uh, please call 443-444-5993. We're going to share that number in the comments as well. Uh, so thanks again and have a great day, everybody. Thank you.